Hey guys, TSL here back with a brand new video. In today's video, we will be fixing the doors not opening after the first room. The first thing I want to do is in our dungeon generator script, we are going to add this here and we just want to add one to it. Um, <clears throat> next thing I want to do just for testing will be to go to replicate storage in our rooms and I just don't want to play in the corner long rooms right now because that takes uh, quite a bit for testing. So uh, as we saw in the last, well actually what happened basically, I'm sorry that I didn't realize this, but one of the mobs got stuck behind the door so then I never ended up actually testing that the rest of the doors open. Don't know how that got by me. Um, anyway, sorry about that and we're going to fix that today. So. After that, we check if there is a next room. Okay, next room dot destroy. So maybe we'll add a print here for our next room and then just see if it's uh, working or see what it's printing, rather. So, the first door does open. Uh, we will want to not make them take damage when we step on them too, when they're already dead. Um, and also, just like despawn them after a little bit. Because we don't really need all their body parts laying everywhere. Okay, uh, we see the doors already open, so that's... A little bit weird. It printed room two and then it printed room three after that too. Okay, so um Okay, this should not be plus one, this should be equals to zero actually. And um let's check this out again. That was my mistake. So let's start. Okay, cool. We got another good room spawn with a short room right here. Okay, so we printed room two and the door did open. So if we go here slightly longer room but still not a bad spawn okay these guys are dead and unlike last time the door did not open yet okay that's fine oh yeah we should also make it so that we actually spawn at the beginning of the current room that we're in um, so we will do that. I guess we could do that today. Right, so these last ice goons got to get it real quick. And all right, there we go. The door did open. So let's try this. Let's just go through the whole thing. Make sure it keeps opening and that it's not like a specific level. Because what it could have been is that the level that I actually tested it on, um, I could have forgotten to put something there but it seems like it is working so one last guy right here all right yeah this one worked too all right so what i want to try now is i'm just going to test it one more time off camera with the corner room too and just make sure that it's still working okay last three guys door is still not open
All right, so now quickly what we're going to do is um, actually do the thing so that the mobs don't kill you once they're already dead. So we're going to go to our script over here and we are going to zoom in a little bit and then go down to our, I guess, move mob to nearest player would be. Or actually, we have a died on the mob somewhere. I think that would be in here. No, I don't think so. Actually, that's remote handler script. Um, oh, it's probably here. Counter module dot check room. No, not exactly. Remote handler attack. Um, is it in the actual mobs themselves? Maybe I think it's in this script. Yes, it's actually in the damage script itself. So, what we're going to do here is when we die um, of a is dead equal to false um, and we'll have if player and not is dead so if they're not dead and then over here we're going to want to say that they are dead um, equals true and then what we can also do is import <clears throat> we can import debris service game colon get service debris and then we can say debris colon add item and we will just add our script dot parent I think script dot parent and they will destroy after a second of being dead so let's just go ahead and test this out real quick. Alright, so the body parts do disappear and they don't damage you either. So it works perfect. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just move the spawn to the end of the level. So what we can actually do, hold on, let's go back in here. I just want to show you guys so you have a better idea. Uh, what we can actually do is you see we have this thing right these parts that's where all the things connect to uh, and if you go ahead and you click on this right the, f the room in front of us has a back connection piece same thing for this room for like an actual room it also has a back connection piece so what we're going to want to do is actually set our player spawn point to the back connection so let's do that um, in our dungeon generator script what we can do is when we get the next mob right or actually when we're checking that there so here is where we change our current room our next room destroy we can get our do we have our player actually somewhere referenced? It does not look like it. Um, but actually we will want to set the spawn point for all of the players in the game. So what we can do is for for underscore comma player in players colon get players get players do and then up here we want to import players as game phone get service players
could say player dot respawn location will be equal to next room dot back connection and that should work let's see if we have any errors going on okay no errors right now Okay, um, expected spawn location. Okay, so these actually would have to be parts. All right, so it looks like you can't actually use regular parts and it has to actually be a spawn location if you do it that way. So what I'm thinking, we have a problem in here. Uh, we don't want to be using the next room. We would want to be using um, last room, which would at the time be the current room and then we changed it after okay so uh, last room just go back in here and we can do a local location or LLC for short equals instance dot new spawn location uh, the location parent could be this And the location position could be this position. And then this could be location like that. So now if we go ahead and test. Okay, we got this room. Okay, so we have a part here. If we die, then I spawn here. Okay, so it works great. Uh, what we can do as well is we can make this anchored and transparent, fully, fully transparent. All right, so now everything should be working. I uh, will give it one final test so we don't have something happen like last time and we will get on our way. Okay, so yeah, now we can't see it, but if we die, then we still respawn there. And let's just die one more time for good measure, just to make sure that it's not a fluke. Hopefully this, all right, uh, we can also change the shield time of the spawn location. Um, because if you see in the properties of a spawn location, has force field duration um, for the main room it's set to zero but if we check 
the dungeon levels, this should be room one, I think, back connection, spawn location. You see that the force field duration is 10 seconds. But anyways, we spawned back here, so you could just change that um, on your own. Pretty easy, just the duration is, I don't know, you could look it up if you, if you are struggling too. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, all right. So because of this error, you guys didn't really give me many ideas on what boss power to make. And I honestly don't really have many because I haven't played a dungeon game in a while, actually. So I think this video will just be a shorter one. And um, I will, if you guys give me ideas quickly, then I will make the next one a lot quicker than it took me to make this one. And I promise you that. Um, Hopefully it will be in only two weeks because next week would be a super power training simulator video And then the week after that will be another dungeon video with whatever idea you guys make um, And to even make up for this one I will do two ideas in if in that video if you guys give me them So anyways guys uh, that being said I'm glad that we were at least able to get this bug out and I'll see you in the next one